beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. We started a series called The Imagines, a series that attempts to prepare us for the inevitable manifestation of the church we have seen the signs and we have read the writings on the wall that the season is near we are more than ever before in the heart of prophecy as a congregation of God's people and it is very important as you will be learning today that there will be a sharpening a dealing volume please there will be a building of the spirit and this is my passion god is going somewhere with us as we travel around this nation strengthening the body of christ and contributing our quota to the building of this army i see how possible this prophecy is day in day out week in week out I see that the Spirit of God is strong upon this nation. Hallelujah. And we will not fail Him. Hallelujah. I assure you that the church will not fail. Because Christ Himself will build the church. Hallelujah. So we spoke first and foremost about the prophecy. How that there is a prophecy upon the church. Many prophecies scattered in scripture. How that there will be an emergence of the body of Christ. And um, Micah chapter 4 talks about the mountain of the Lord being lifted above every other mountain. Obadiah 1 21 says, Saviors shall arise from Zion and they will judge the mount of Esau. Hallelujah. Revelation 10 begins to tell us how that the kingdoms of this world were this song is I think that this should be the, the theme song for this, this series. Hallelujah. And so there is a prophecy upon the church. A prophecy that announces the emergence of the church and the inevitable doom of Babylon. Last week we considered Babylon, the concept of the Antichrist system. Please listen to me. I want you to pay attention to this series because it represents the foundation of what the church is alive for right now. There are certain messages that if a preacher is not preaching in this day and in this season, it is a sign 
that is not in touch with spiritual reality. Hallelujah. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. So we are not just bringing this as a, can you help us? We are not just bringing this as a, a teaching just to keep time going. It is very prophetic. I want to do a quick recap on last week's message. I'll try to be as simple because the goal is understanding. Not just to impress you with revelations. I want us to understand. This is the heart of the contention of the Christian faith. Please let me have two people. No, don't worry, Pastor Femi. You can see now. Only two people. One here, one here. God bless you. Hallelujah. The entire scope of the Christian experience is about the contention of two kingdoms, two governments, two entities. And humanity is the object of attention. On one side, there is a creator who is at the same time a king and a loving father who has manipulated history and has orchestrated eternity according to his predeterminate counsel. And there is a kingdom, a system, a government, an agenda, a strategy masterminded by this entity once called Lucifer. One who has made himself the arch enemy of the agenda of God. Are you following what I'm saying now? And humanity through civilization and as we have evolved as sociological beings have been shrouded from the reality that all there is to the existence of mankind as far as our dispensation is attempting to define is who truly owns the allegiance of mankind. Are you getting what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how many years you spend educating yourself. It doesn't matter any other thing you do. This is the prime, the apex of this. God committed all of his authority and his glory to one of these men. So that through dominion and reproduction, the influence of his government will fill this territory of his kingdom. And by treason and deception, man, through the woman, handed the authority, the government, the authority to order and structure the earth to Satan, Lucifer. And on the strength of that authority, he has gone to cause havoc upon the nations. It is for this purpose that Jesus came. He didn't just come to take us to heaven. He didn't just come to birth a religion. He didn't just come to make us Christians. He came as a sacrifice. Part of the legal procedures that will bring back man and humanity to his original blueprint. And that happened at the expense of his blood. It happened at the expense of his glory. It happened at the expense of his life. Hallelujah. And then, in spite of the death of Christ, that has granted us access to now willfully declare our allegiance to his majesty through deception and witchcraft and manipulation of spiritual laws and the working of evil upon the mindset of people. There is still a refusal from the kingdom of darkness to subscribe to what Christ has done. Although the price has been paid. Although access has been given to us. But because he made us free moral agents. It will be unscriptural and against his character to impose his dominion upon us. So he gives us his spirit to explain to us the reality of his agenda. That by understanding his agenda, we will see that he's not just a dictator who wants the allegiance of humanity, but also a father who seeks to raise a family that can have a relationship. Hallelujah. And all through the years, the one gospel 
that hell has attacked most is the gospel of the kingdom an unveiling of the blueprint of God's intention the prophecy for the nations an unveiling of this system that has masqueraded itself and evolved together with civilization as we grew as mankind the system grew with us hallelujah and today this system has like an octopus spread its influence across the strata of human existence it has been the fabric of civilization the ideas and the ideologies from this system has shaped our understanding of humanity but there is still a cry that the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdom of our God for many reasons number one because the earth is the Lord's number two because the price has been paid number three because God is sovereign and the almighty these attributes of God are the factors that give us the impetus to contribute our quota to seeing this agenda come to pass listen to me if you live your life never understanding that this is the summary of our Christian experience an antichrist system a system that was intentionally built and the purpose is to create a platform where rebellion against God will become an institution not just an act the same way corruption can be institutionalized that's how this system of Babylon at the heart of the agenda of the Antichrist system is to build a structure where rebellion becomes an institution that means it no longer it becomes an unconscious act that mankind by default will walk in rebellion against the government of God and listen there is a prophecy Babylon the great this system will fall and I began to tell us last week explaining to us the operation of this system that the way this system works is that it keeps in itself all of the things that represent value for mankind and then it will only ask you for one thing bow down to me and I will open the gates bow down to me and I will open the gates of marriage bow down to me and I will open the gates of politics and government bow down to me and I will open the gates of music and influence and I reveal to us the reason why the media and especially the music industry is gaining ascendance is a spiritual law because every time the allegiance of a people would be declared to a king music will precede it right in Daniel chapter 2 and 3 when you begin to read what happened to the three Hebrew boys it says when you begin to hear the pipe and the horns the moment you begin to hear musical sounds what will you do let the whole land bow down to a graven image notice hold on let me explain something do you see the strategy of Babylon Nebuchadnezzar never said bow down to me but he created an image of him are you getting my point he created an image of himself and dropped it and he said don't worry if I say bow down to me it may look deceptive so bow down to the image I told you that the goal of Babylon is to bow down to any other thing aside from the Christ so you may say I'm not bowing to Satan but whatever else you bow down to outside of the Christ is him including ministry including anointing as spiritual as they are the seat of the Christian experience is not the anointing it's not ministry the seat of the Christian experience is not even Bible the seat of the Christian experience 
is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. He is the object. Everything revolves around him. Jesus at the center of it all. That's how it is done. Jesus at the center of it all. Listen. This antichrist system has built different statues and has placed it all around. Right? And so what happens is through witchcraft and some level of intelligence that are superhuman, they seem to hoard the wealth of the world and then they begin to manipulate policies that will compel men to bow to the dictates, the speakings of the beast. Are you getting what I'm saying? And today, listen to me, I bring you a very sad news that a major part of humanity, please don't stop the strings, just play the strings. A major part of humanity are bowing down to Satan through many formats. Pastors are bowing down. Celebrities are bowing down. Students are bowing down. Workers are bowing down. So many people, poor people are bowing down. Wealthy people are bowing down. But because the system has masqueraded itself in secrecy, we do not really see the object of our allegiance. But the apostolic and the prophetic spirit comes to unveil the deception and reveal to the body that there is only one Lord. There is only one faith. There is only one baptism. This antichrist system has assumed different names, different bodies, different platforms, being deceived by themselves. Satan has, even among them, Satan has orchestrated deception. So that it looks like they are fighting themselves, but the truth is that they are all a team. Is the extent of the deception. And the name that that body will assume before the return of Christ is the new world order. A structure and a system that attempts to unify humanity under one umbrella. The question is what is the umbrella? Are you interested in what I'm saying tonight? I'm just doing a recap of last week's message. One umbrella. And so the United Nations now unites all of the nations and then the African Union all of these are formations of the Tower of Babel they are already the foundations of the rebuilding of that godless system Genesis 11 replaying itself again listen I want you to forgive me because I, I really would have played some documentaries hallelujah I would have shown you documentaries where aliens what you call foreign bodies or whatever it is you want to use how they have assisted the technology of mankind until now some of the super intelligent inventions that have happened that we credited to the wisdom of men was as a result of secret meetings and fraternities with demonic entities we will supply you a level of superior intelligence that will help to accelerate this agenda. You will make money in the process, but there is a deal. And they never reveal the other side of the deal. If, I, if I'm in a covenant with you, the benefit is mutual. We have seen what these demonic alien bodies have supplied to humanity, but we have not seen what we pledge to them. And it is happening fast. Now, don't you ever say this does not concern you. Because very soon you will see how that the media and every aspect of human existence has been polluted and corrupted. It used to be in secret. But right now they have laid sufficient foundations. And according to their structure like the Titanic, they are convinced that it will not crash. So they are now coming in the open. We are the ones. We hold the power. We hold the authority. We hold your daily bread. We hold the keys to your relevance. We can shut your universities and open them when we want to. 
we can shut the doors of wealth if we want to we can declare war in a nation if we want to you are seeing the formation of the antichrist government you better listen to this because you have confessed all your life that you will not die the meaning of that is you will be alive as you are right now you will see that formation but the parts they do not understand is that there is an army hmm. i'm telling you every time i say this i feel excited there is an army see do you know how many centuries it took for satan to build this system to this level of sophistication there were times when the body of christ the church of god in the earth was so strong they would not even allow an iota of the antichrist system what the devil did was to sacrifice that generation and go for the ones to come are you getting my point he waited decades for the generation of the fathers that truly had reverence what he did was he led them through deception to be so occupied with ministry and revivals that they never paid attention to the generation coming are you getting what i'm saying so they were busy doing what they believed to be kingdom advancement and the devil started bringing messages that made them believe that jesus will come in their time so they felt there was no need to raise the younger generation because after all right what i'm telling you is something that happened in the maybe 30s 40s they said jesus would come certain heretic teachings started mixing up with revivals and they said jesus is coming there's no need teaching the younger generation and so at a point there was a period and a dispensation of time where the precepts of god was not handed over to the generation and then there were others that came in the 60s and 70s god's generals as we know and yet the devil kept quiet what he did was he started attacking those who are now the presidents of the nations he started following them when they were children when others said they are young just leave them what will they know and the devil said let's make this a 60 70 80 100 year project and all the reverends who serve god died and they buried them right all the mothers who will not hear a child say stupid or something they will beat his mouth american or no american the devil said let's be patient we can't stop them but they can they will die so let's be patient until they die look at me satan can be patient he can wait for a whole generation to pass while the this generation right now that are perpetuating how old are they most of the people who are the envoys of darkness especially in the music ministry <laughs> sorry in music what music industry they are not up to 30. i hope you know that It was a secret thing right now there are shows where people come and identify celebrities from childhood is that so that's the strategy of the devil they identify them talent horns if you are not talented you are not needed in the rebuilding of babylon see that so you come and sing and, and you sing as if you are talking they shift you one side and they find the bright ones and then they give them some money and their broke parents say go we believe in what god is doing through you and now they sign contracts and they say look you are a machine if we did not tell you know it now you are not a human being you are a machine what does a machine do perfect obedience you own it it remains until you off it it does not off by its initiative we will give you money we will put you on the scene so that you will use your influence to attract others but behind the scene you have sold your soul are you getting what i'm saying now and when the devil realized that there were men and women of god who were noticing that something was wrong he quickly manipulated the economy so that poverty becomes a serious issue and then they stop looking and they say okay, let's handle this issue and taught them wrong principles so that they will use the entire lifetime looking for money and not turn and say something is wrong there must be a correction are you getting what i'm saying 
everybody say babylon the antichrist system will fall say one more time babylon the antichrist system will fall this is the reason why somebody will go for a meeting abroad and come back and just look at your god-fearing mother and orchestrate a scandal that has no head and tail and fire them from the company immediately they are fired somebody comes in and now he says now we are the top members of the cabinet we represent the future of this company and we pledge our allegiance to the same deity right gradually jesus was taken out of media they still left god not if you if you bring in jesus there is trouble they knew that if they take jesus god you can leave angels you can leave god you can leave seraphs and cherubims they removed jesus the center of everything later on they started attacking god right and then when the grace message began to be exaggerated they leverage on the exaggeration to remove the ten commandments they say after all you hear what you are saying you don't need it let's get it out but it was not about the object as it is about the person that was choking darkness notice this they never said don't stop serving jesus they started taking away emblems and things that represented the presence of the christ in a territory listen there is a reason why things are documented archaeology is a spiritual thing it's not there is men will lose touch with reality if there are no structures and monuments to remind them these things are not they are not some you know this is the exaggeration now, of course i believe in the the message of grace don't get me wrong but i'm saying benny Hinn and and and, and sidroth calls it the hyper grace message when it is pushed out of the boundary right there are monuments that have choked the design of this antichrist system certain emblems of the spirit upon currencies upon lands churches that were built where revivals happen every time you want to build an antichrist system when you see these monuments they they represent the presence of god in territories and right now they are breaking them down in the name of excavations in the name of westernizations they are breaking they are cutting humanity away from the history of godliness right they have manipulated laws such that if you have a child like this our dear lady right now she can decide to tell her mother that she wants to get married this baby and if you take her to court be sure you will lose because that's the kind of agenda they want in two days they would have set up a website stop oppressing children.com right and they manipulate a news a demonic nigerian mother violates the human rights of her daughter the antichrist system is hungry for scandals a man of god does something now i'm not i'm not endorsing scandals but something happened maybe he fell you know into all kinds of things and they just they just magnify it they use his worst picture right they use a nice watch like i'm wearing now and say the ones who eat our money and sleep with our ladies caption run down the ministry and do everything they think it's a perpetuation of civilization but what is happening hear me what is happening behind the scene is an advancement of the antichrist system because a day will come they will now start probing into sunday and say based on what do believers gather on sunday right gradually they won't attack it now it's too early they will build foundations and one day they will now say no church will operate until they are licensed by the government and they will set question and answer for men of god based on theology oh yes oh yes it will happen and say you must be certified by the state to be a preacher is that true and you must be registered with the government and the government will pay you your salary and what that means is according to the way you dance to their dictates notice oh please just pay attention uh, this is a background we have not started today's teaching i want to land this series with something heavy this night hallelujah 
then they will give pastors uniform if it's not blue and black suit you cannot preach so that if i am poor and i cannot afford a thousand dollars versace what does that mean the message will not pass are you getting what i'm saying and then they will now reduce our service time to 45 minutes because they have they have interpreted the church as a nuisance to society the average american will tell you the church is a nuisance they will say all they are doing is raising money and then in the fear of that churches have become welfare organizations just to validate the offerings that have been given and so a pastor comes and says we are revealing the love of jesus we are caring for the hurting look let me tell you straight to the point without ambiguity caring for the poor and the fatherless is part of the nature of god and is incorporated as part of the gospel but if that is what we think is kingdom advancement we are joking notice that all the ministries especially outside of this country whose agenda is all about caring for the poor and hurting receive an applause from people they say yes just stay there nothing more no controversial teachings care for the poor and then you see one godless man partners with them and says i'm giving you a million dollars feed the hungry and all of that you think that's what god asks us to come and do here just come and keep feeding hungry people you see that i'm showing you babylon masquerading itself and so they say you're a pastor ten thousand members we feed the hungry our church is open once you're hungry just make your way jesus died after all what are the offerings for now look let me tell you fear has made a lot of men of god to dance to these things but it's a corruption of the strategy it is still babylon babylon is making such bold advancements right bold advancements look at musics that are being played and in those musics jesus is acted as a slave there are all kinds of and they act they act music and they put crown and mock jesus and people buy the albums they sell millions per day but you raise a song and the company you want to promote you they will buy it and run you down and sell it back to another look let me tell you church i want you to wake up there is a call there is a need for someone to go and take the land we have the call and we see the need we don't feel strong enough for this but the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of the lord so take us break us make us release us we're ready to go we are ready to go ready to go ready to go sing one time with me i'm ready to go ready to go ready to go ready to go say anything and do anything that attacks this government and the first thing they will do to you is to try to stamp you down but if they find out that you are operating by an a, by a principle that is higher than their wisdom the next strategy is to negotiate with you they say after all we are not enemies it's just different sides of god why fight it is true we all believe in jesus but the question is as what as what i can believe in sam but as what it's not just to believe in jesus there is something about him you must believe so you see the world is saying no 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 come on you guys are fighting we all believe in jesus but the question is as what because they want you to settle and say we are all believers we are family hold my hands we are one right one big family 
the sun just exploded and vomited all of us it's just that we are we are so old we don't know ourselves so we are one big family i need you to survive the question i have for you is we all believe in jesus as what right now even preachers cannot say jesus because it's offensive so they say god exactly they are walking based on the mapping of babylon because it's easy to turn god into anything god is a bottle of minerals to some people fanta right god is a beautiful lady to somebody god is a fish i have a picture um on my system a woman that lay down with her sweetheart sardine sardine fish fish sardine right lay down no i have it the woman lay down in such atmosphere of love and romance and the fish was there lying down that can be god and you have no right a system has been created that you have no right to probe it are you getting me very soon they will teach our children that there is no male and female so a child of seven years will see you and say good afternoon ma if you don't answer they will take you to court because they will now say what is the basis of male and female are you getting what i'm saying <laughs> behold the emergence of babylon we are distracted trying to be mogs we are distracted building ministries and cathedrals and babylon is flourishing effortlessly but in the name of jesus there is only one resistance to this agenda it is called the ecclesia god's apostolic and prophetic strategy and tonight very briefly i'm going to be unveiling to us what the church really is what our mission is in the earth and the strategy for the execution of this project god bless you guys please sit down write this word down ecclesia e double k l e s i a e double k l e s i a ecclesia the first mention of this word theologically speaking is in matthew 16 verse 18 when jesus says um upon this rock i will build my ecclesia right i will build my church i will build i will not contract it i will build my church and it says the gates of hell shall not prevail that means i will build it and put in it resistant components such that no matter the assault of the gates of hell it will not prevail say amen so the church was designed to succeed and it will not fail in the name of jesus christ the church is not just a congregation of people watch this the church is not just koinonia one ministry this ministry led by a general overseer or superintendent or priest or or apostle or prophet or whatever it is no no that's not the scope of the understanding of the church the first understanding of the church i want you to have is that the church is god's strategy for kingdom advancement the church is god's strategy it is a strategy not just a people it's a formula the church the ecclesia is a spiritual strategy god himself designed that strategy he died to raise that church that ecclesia that will judge the powers of darkness that will restore the ordinances of the kingdom are you getting what i'm saying everybody say the church number two the church is an institution the only institution in the earth 
where the agenda the blueprint and the strategy for kingdom advancement is supposed to be taught understood explained the church is an institution the only institution commissioned by god himself as the center for kingdom advancement the prophetic and apostolic platform where men are made to understand the precepts of the kingdom where the history of the dealings of god with man where his blueprint where the speakings of god to the nations will come about through are you getting blessed and then number three the church is also the name given to the people the congregation the individuals who will carry out this agenda this mandate this assignment of kingdom advance so the church is a strategy the church is an institution and the church is the collection of the people if you do not understand this about church you're going to church on sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday is only religion right now we go to churches we go to church on sunday on friday on wednesday all kinds of activities yet the average believer in nigeria does not even know why the church is there the church is a strategy say after me this church is a strategy the church is an institution the church represents a people god's own people the body of christ the battle acts that he will use to terrorize the gates of hell it's very very important jeremiah 51 verse 20 tells us he said thou he was speaking about the church the church is my battle axe like a man going for war and he holds the tool that you will use to fight and god says the church is the tool i am holding you are my battle axe you are my weapons of war i will use you to break in pieces this system i will use you to crumble this system this godless antichrist system listen our generation will not be the first to crumble the antichrist system it has been crumbled again through history so don't you say it's impossible remember in the days of noah what happened god used a family as a type of the church noah right he created he revealed a strategy through that man they became an institution that brought the animals to safety and judgment was declared and babylon fell is that true we see again elijah the tishbite alongside the seven thousand prophets under the custody of obadiah right how that they judged the altars of darkness they slew all the prophets of Baal. fire came from heaven and consumed it is that true and there have been many other instances of the victory of the church so i want you to know that the church was designed to win the only difference is that our generation will culminate the last victory that will usher the king. Let our king be lifted up. Oh, son. This is the song. Uh, we will lift up the king like a trophy. Our generation will do it. At the end of all things, we will look at ourselves. Say, Jesus, you be lifted high, higher above UN, above the African Union, by a system that has not yet been revealed. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Just sing it one time. Jesus, you be lifted higher. higher. 
that's the prophecy that is upon our generation listen that is the prophecy that is upon every single one of us whether you realize it or not our generation will return the king of kings we will prove to babylon that jesus lives we will sing those songs of victory at the end when all this is done the bible tells us babylon the great is falling the kings will stand as they watch this city born in one hour it will be a speedy walk by the church the kings will watch their wife jezebel in ashes as the church begins to sing the songs of victory we will exit out of this earth as a victorious church are you hearing what i'm saying we are not living as some fearful people saying ah thank god no 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 not just people who they have slaughtered here and there with the sword and we say we survive uh -uh. there will be a flawless contention of the church it will happen for a very short time and then we will hear that trumpet our king the captain of this army he will appear we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem and our tears and all our sorrows will be no more we will sing with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb holy 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 is the lamb This is what will happen. This is what will happen. But before it happens, we have a strategy. The church, the ecclesia, is a strategy. It's an institution and is a people. Oh, I see this countless times in the vision of the Lord. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yeah. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Judges chapter 6. Don't turn there. An angel appears to a weak man called Gideon. And says oh thou mighty man of fellow and Gideon says no don't call me a mighty man Babylon has taken over the Midianites have invaded the system I am the least the last born and even in my father's tribe I am he said don't worry I am not looking for your strategy there is a plan just be available while that was happening the Midianites were enjoying the show there was no way they would have imagined that Gideon and 300 men will bring justice but Gideon he said if you claim the revival is coming where is the anointing where is the mantle that our fathers had because they had something that made them do what they did right now don't talk to me please when Beyonce and Jay-Z and all of these people are invading the systems. When right now, you must bow down directly. Right? When all the godless people are the billionaires in the world. Leave me alone. That was a type of our generation. And the angel called him by the future, not the past. He called a man who was hiding like the church. Hiding so that they will not criticize me. Hiding so that my church will grow. Hiding so that I will attract money from government. But the angel said, Oh thou mighty man of fellow. Hmm. One time, a little boy ran in from the wilderness to bring food for his brothers. And he saw a beast roaring called Goliath of God. And the Israelites were chickening out. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? There's an army rising up. It has happened before. There's an army rising up. Listen, 
when Gideon mobilized the army just like God is using us to mobilize an army everybody was shouting but some were still afraid they were wondering will it happen and at a point God said Kai I want to do mighty things there's so much unbelief separate them use water the word let me see their response to the word to separate them those who give priority and address the word in a certain posture may they qualify to lead the team only 300 men were found and God said Gideon you are small but do you believe that I can go with you and Gideon said let's go kingdoms rising against kingdoms you will see small men you will see ordinary men with an anointing that has never been seen with an unction that has never been seen with a dimension of wealth that has never been seen it will happen the church is rising i told you the church is a strategy and part of the things that will be given that church is the hidden wisdom of god the bible says that we speak this wisdom in a mystery it's not just tongues there is a strategy the reason why it will not be revealed now is because we are not ready when an army is ready are you following me now joshua was angry and sad moses had died and in joshua chapter one he was oh thank god his name is joshua mm. standing before 2.5 million people full of fear and unbelief a fortified city called jericho and the lord said don't mind what you are seeing while we look not at the things that are seen don't mind it it looks too solid but there is a strategy i told you the church is a strategy it's not that the church has it the church itself is a strategy and the lord called joshua and said moses my servant is dead he said as i was with moses with the same anointing as i was with smith wigglesworth as i was with maria woodward eater with the same mantle the same unction i will be with you he said only be thou strong and of good courage only be thou strong i'm sure the israelites were in their camps just talking and saying this young guy he brought us here to kill us and i can imagine angels moving around jericho saying in seven days in seven days what you see as solid as it is made from concrete and granite will become history because through faith we understand that the things that exist are held by an immaterial force and when that force is manipulated the things that are real will crumble our concept of reality has been altered this looks solid but by the word of the lord it will disintegrate as if it never existed hallelujah and then joshua encouraged the people said stand strong and then when they were ready the lord said joshua come let me reveal to you the strategy here is the strategy for conquering babylon in that dispensation you will do stupid things this is the strategy gather the priest where are the worshipers let them lead and let me have the trumpets and the ancient instruments of worship they may not make sense he didn't say get a knife right he didn't say go for war he said you don't worry they would have said uh -uh, our fathers went through the red sea he said no i have different types of strategy there are times i can tell you stand still there are other times i can say go around the mountain seven times it doesn't matter what strategy just know that there is always a strategy for every dispensation are you following what i'm saying now they went round, and i'm sure the people in jericho were just looking and laughing five chariots could stand on the fence of jericho meaning even if it falls it becomes another fence and while they were moving with all kinds of fear having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete and on the seventh day in all kinds of fear god called joshua again and he said son this day i will exalt you among the people this day all that you have said will come to pass and joshua said we will go around seven times and at the seventh time the strategy is called tehillah 
it's a mystery shout it's a shout where the instruments and the voices of men coincide it activates a law these men do not know in the spirit and at the seventh time that apostle stood and said shout and as they shouted i'm sure those people were surprised when the earth opened up it was a sound that caused the earth to open up and it swallowed that fence except the partition of rahab in one hour jericho that great city that made a boast against the god of israel in one hour babylon is falling listen if you do not know god your heart will fail to ever think a revival will come upon the earth because babylon is a noisy system it makes noise they have insulted the church of the lord jesus christ did you hear what they said when they fired the missile to israel they said their god caused a wind to blow the missile Manda bala kataya. you fire a missile a mystery wind shifts it from a nation to the sea that's a foretaste of the present power of the kingdom man that act has kept the nation in silence for a while you fire a missile well targeted with superior technology in the air brothers and sisters the israelites were just moving around and say you don't know abraham that's why you are doing this nonsense you don't know our father you don't know the covenant upon which we are standing and brothers and sisters the same wind that blew the red sea i'm telling you what has happened in our day a wind blew it away there is a strategy it is they that know their god that shall be strong if you don't know your god you will be weak those witches and wizards will look at your family let me bring it down and look at you and vow pray and fast they will tell you nothing will rise but when you get the strategy you will see how cheap he is don't you think your prayer and coming maybe if i'm talking of nations nations there does not just mean america and the rest your territory look at the speakings of the beast in our homes a herbalist gets up and tells you i killed your father are you hearing me and i'm going to do the same thing and he goes back to sleep you are crying because there is no strategy let god give you what will make that man not sleep pharaoh 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 himself that wizard called pharaoh he refused to let israel go and god said that's right you touch my son i touch your son and he killed his firstborn the very future of israel of egypt listen do you know why egypt prospered egypt prospered because of a blessed man called joseph the moment he died they forgot the god and the blessing and the covenant that brought them into that state and when he said let my people go it was hunger that brought them to egypt right hunger is still bringing men to egypt it was hunger and famine that brought them to become slaves is god speaking to us the lord revealed to me certain things and i'll just share two of them and then we'll pray what is kingdom advancement let me teach you tonight what kingdom advancement is many times we collect offering in church and say lord let this be used for the advancement of your kingdom and the preacher who is saying it does not even understand what he's saying what does it mean to advance the kingdom number one kingdom advancement involves submitting to the person of jesus christ acts chapter 2 from verse 37 to 38 when peter preached they said men and brethren what should we do he says repent right and believe okay i thought it's projected that scripture believe in the lord jesus christ repent listen there is no kingdom advancement when a person does not submit notice my choice of words i didn't say match out and say lord jesus lord jesus i confess you i confess you no 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 kingdom advancement is when you submit you submit your entire life it's not enough for jesus to become savior 
he must become lord and he must become king these dimensions must be experienced it says believe every one of you in the name of jesus christ look let me tell you we have a seeker friendly generation that is very ashamed of letting people know that the heart of the christian experience is not just repenting and coming for an altar call and you say in five years i've saved two million people to what degree have they submitted to jesus christ not god not god not god jesus the son of the living god i believe in god i believe in god i believe in a bottle of minerals i believe in one idol no it's not just god jesus the christ not the footballer not the actor in mexico jesus the christ the son of the living god it is important that the beginning of the structure of your christian experience how many people do we have in our churches we have never probed into the sincerity of their decision to submit to the government of god there are elders in church right deacons pastors bishops apostles who obviously do not submit to the government of christ they have verbalized lord jesus come into my heart forgive my sins but their life they have not taken advantage of the grace and the substitutionary work of christ and the grace that it supplies the centurion said for i am a man under authority kingdom advancement hear me first starts in your life when you submit to the lordship of jesus in totality our christianity is not rich because we have declared but we have not submitted that's the revelation behind the baptism comes from the word baptizo it means to be partially or totally immersed in a fluid such that you look at the man and you cannot see him again only the fluid that he's in is a type of being baptized into the authority the name and the government of the christ say amen listen this is very important this is the beginning the foundation don't confuse this this is the foundation of kingdom advancement submitting to jesus christ not god jesus the christ the son of the living god jesus son of god i believe in Sing it one more time. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Say after me, I believe in Jesus. Say it, I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of the living God. I believe he is my Lord. I believe he's my savior listen when you go back this week i want you to examine not just that you believe in jesus but what you believe about him don't let seeker friendly messages just tell you just believe in him right jesus or say god i love you help me to love you help me to feed the hungry help me to greet prisoners that's not salvation you are not born again are you hearing what i'm saying charity is not the pathway to salvation it is good we do it as a ministry hallelujah number two Kingdom advancement involves bringing nations and territories to submit to Jesus Christ. Bringing nations and territories to submit to Jesus Christ and subscribe to his principles. So that experience that has happened to you, submission.
to the person not just the principles the person there are people who have submitted to the principles of jesus christ they are getting rich by it they are being saved by it there are unbelievers who don't love jesus but they tight they connect to the law of seed time and harvest and the heavens are opening they are rich but they are going to hell you must bring nations to submit first to the person before the principles never ignore introducing men to that person not just as a cruel king but as a savior as lord as king jesus said no man comes to the father except through me he said i am the way not one of them definite article i am the way so all of that gospel of universalism many ways to jesus many ways to the father right no it says the sheep or how did he put it it enters through the door right i am the door every other man is a window listen part of the call of the ecclesia is by the agency of the spirit to compel nations hear me not to feed the hungry that's not our priority it is part of the package but it is not our priority if no one has told you joshua selman is telling you tonight listen to me that kingdom the core of kingdom advancement is bringing nations and territories not just to the government of heaven introducing them to the person of christ that word government can be deceptive because someone can be among the people of god tight like them speak like them but not know they are god right christianity brings you into a relationship we want those nations to experience that there is a god who is not just an idol to be bowed to alone but a loving person that can be experienced this is what the fathers lived and they died for they brought a generation into an encounter not a man ah i was studying about the wealth revival and i, I watched i watched a, a documentary on it and all through while the documentary was playing tears were coming down from my eyes i saw the picture of that man evan roberts a man who was mightily empowered of the spirit he did men will read about the revival in newspapers and from the newspaper an anointing will break out railway factory workers people who fetch coal to put right people who were miners they started prayer meetings the fire of god broke out in all these mining places there's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus there will be saved. Can we sing it just one time? There's gonna be, there will be a great awakening pioneered by Nigeria, pioneered by Africa, a revelation of the person of the Christ to the nations. There's gonna be. And everyone, and everyone who Jesus, Hallelujah. Yesterday we were in Joss. I went to minister in a meeting called the Feast of Incense. And there were all kinds of people there. You know, um, some of the armor bearers of Prophet Chuck Pierce. Many of you may know him. Chuck Pierce, one of the notable prophets around the world. And some of the people came. There were a number of people. Um, Apostle Pearl Coupe, a number of great seasoned men and women of God. 
and I came, I shared. After I shared for 30 minutes, the moment I was done, one of the armor bearers of Chuck Pierce, they were there and they asked me not to go. And he came and they took a mantle, Chuck Pierce's own very mantle, and they brought it and they began to prophesy. The things that the Lord was showing them about me and the revivals that would come. I'm not talking about myself. I'm just using this as and they were all there. We were there together. And while they began to prophesy and speak. Hallelujah. I stood there listening to them and I knew that this was. God is transferring mantles from region to region. And after everything, they just gave me the mantle. They said, it's yours. Go with it. Yesterday in the night, I took it out and I said, Lord what is this what what is the meaning of this because i know that this is not just about a man carrying a mantle what what does that mean and then the lord began to reveal to me that this is part of the strategy of the revival that is coming lord pour out your spirit on all the people of the earth let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy. Send us dreams and visions. Reveal the secrets of your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, our faith is rising. Let creation see the coming of your name. There's gonna be a great awakening. It will happen in our lifetime. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone. They. eight days from now the election of Nigeria will start for some of us we have watched it like a movie it's not for me to come and broadcast things but we have seen it ah there's gonna be a great awakening there's gonna be a great revival in our land there's gonna be a great awakening so the prosperity the anointing, the influence, the PhD, and all of these things, they are all tools that are supposed to put you in a position where you should introduce your sphere to the person of Christ and to his principles. Look up. Let me balance an erroneous teaching about kingdom advancement. Have you heard of the teaching of takeover? Now let me balance it. Because I want you to know that what many preachers have preached called take over is not what will happen. That is not what God is building right now is the spiritual dimension of his kingdom. This earth and this heaven will pass away. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Kingdom advancement is not the day when railways start working in Nigeria. Right? And all of a sudden we build skyscrapers and we say, my goodness, this is the glory. That's not how it's going to happen. Our generation will not be the ones to bring that. That dimension of the operation of the kingdom will happen when Christ himself returns with his church and his feet touches the Mount of Jerusalem, the center of the earth. He will reign for a thousand years. 
in glory and majesty and during that time there will be a demonstration of peace as has never been seen listen to me if your ambition about kingdom advancement is to make every nigerian own a car let me tell you the truth go and just go to forbes business school and after that join them in the crash of babylon that's not the ambition the ambition is to build the formation of the person of christ in individuals and nations first of course if the person of christ is embraced and his principles are adopted territorially the earth will begin to respond to the excellency of those principles but I want you to know that the focus of God right now upon the nations is to introduce the person of the Christ to individuals, to territories, and to nations. So, the seeker-friendly message of just going to buy toys for children, right? And then we give them toys and never tell them anything about Jesus. And as we give them toys, we kiss them. Mwah, mwah, mwah. All of them. They are going to hell if we do not present the person of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whether Guaranteed Trust Bank partners with Eternity Network International to do a business sensitization exercise and help people who are suffering financially. Thank God for those initiatives. But my brother, if it does not culminate into a direct revelation and submission of the Christ, it is part of Babylon. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, many of you are shocked now because I've insulted your ambition about what you call kingdom takeover. So there are many gullible people. They are saying, oh, hallelujah, a time will come to pass when everybody in Nigeria will be driving a BMW. If that is the revelation you got, that was divination. Not the spirit of the Christ. The formation of kingdom advancement is spiritual. Everybody says spiritual. That's why we need miracles and signs and wonders. That's why we need the operation of the anointing. That's why we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because for now, when his person is revealed to the nations to authorize his coming, because Jesus will not return when opportunity has not given to the nations to hear his voice and to willfully choose whether or otherwise they will subscribe to his government. He said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations. After that, the end will come. Say amen. amen. So listen to me. If God makes you a businessman, you are an envoy there to present the Christ first and then his principles. It doesn't matter in which order they come. The most important thing is that eventually the ideology of the Christ. Listen, this issue of trying to blend into society with diplomacy. There is a level of your pursuit for God that diplomacy can no longer hold. Are you getting what I'm saying? It does not mean that you are in a corporate gathering, a business gathering, and you begin to express some kinds of fanatism. No, there is wisdom. But I'm telling you that eventually, the core of your ideology and belief must be let out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe in Jesus. I believe him as the son of God. And we will use everything as a tool. When we build the schools, it is because we are building Christ. Right? Very important. If all you do is build orphanage, almost every lady wants to build charity organization. The question I have is, do you just want to feed the hungry or give them the bread of life? We have many charity organizations with all kinds of people there. And Jesus is never presented to them. And the people come and we clap for them. We say, Madam, so, 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 and so, a humble woman. This is 15 years of active charity. She's a human activist. This is the trophy they give her. All of that is nonsense. It's still Babylon. If Christ is not at the center of our activity, I'm telling you without any ambiguity, you are part of the building of Babylon. So I desire to be a multi billionaire Why? Because kingdom advancement is capital intensive. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will require a dimension of funding that is selfless. 
to be able to bring that agenda. So uh, for the sake of thy house, I will desire your prosperity. If I want the anointing, the reason is so that the nations can see the manifestation of the glory of God in miracles and signs and wonders. When the eyes of the blind are open and the deaf hear and all kinds of things happen, the glory of Jesus is revealed to the nations to the end that his person will be embraced. Hallelujah. This is the assignment of the church to bring the nations to the lordship of Jesus Christ. To bring the nations, not just by sharing tracts and what we call evangelism, because that strategy, I'm sorry to tell you, to a large extent will not bring a serious harvest. There is one strategy that the church has, has got to use and it's called influence. Influence, one word, influence. Influence in wealth, influence in grace, influence in government. Listen to me. Don't you let anybody tell you that you should not build a bank just because you are a Christian. Build it. Build it. If it is in the name of the Lord, it will be a tool. Don't let anybody tell you the anointing is not useful for kingdom advancement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus himself is going to be lifted and glorified through our lives. I've told the Lord that for as long as I live, directly without any ambition Jesus will be glorified in my life hallelujah this is why I live this is why I move this is why I have my breath. I don't have so many plans every plan I ever bring is my contribution to seeing his kingdom come that's what you should call purpose right say so what is your purpose to be great for what Say, everybody in my family has, has refused to rise up. Me, I will break that chain. Yes, we want the chains broken, but to what effect? Just to prove a point that your father was a failure, your mother was a failure. No, sir. Jesus, you believe that I am. That's why we do all that we do. Higher. Believe that higher. Jesus, you believe that I am in my life, Lord. I am believe that I am. That means if come, these two ladies, come and hold my hands. If these ladies are beautiful and your beauty does not directly reflect the Christ. Let me tell you, you are building Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you are beautiful, listen, listen. I'm showing you that everything, okay, everything around your life must lead to exalting Jesus the Christ. A guy looks at you and says, Ah, you are beautiful. And then he says, You are just laughing. Instead of you to remember immediately, I'm an envoy. I'm an ambassador. How can I take advantage of this opportunity? I'm not saying follow him home and say Joshua Selma and say go and preach. And, and land in trouble and it, it backfires on you. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying that are you that passionate? Somebody brings out a bribe and says take. <laughs> and you hold the money and say I appreciate this. But I want you to know that there is an agenda. I am an agent of the advancement of this agenda. This is five million. Mr. Man, take your money. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me and say, lie, lie. That part, that part of the deal will happen later, not now that I need money. That's why you won't get it. That's why you may not get it because God has seen your heart. Do you love God that much? Do you love God that much? Sisters, have you not seen that it was the beauty of Hadassah, Esther, that brought the salvation of the Jews. Have you not seen that a woman's beauty acted in an apostolic and a prophetic office? Have you not seen that the strength of a man called Samson brought grace? Have you not seen that the wisdom of a man called Bezalel helped in the building of the temple? What do you have 
that has not submitted to this agenda tonight you must submit it what do you have lord i love you but my job is for my stomach my commitment in church i'm a sanctuary keeper in the church that's enough for you but when it comes to this job is for me to chop it must come under the government of christ tonight we are going to pray bless you to yours to yours oh lord to yours to yours oh lord i went for a meeting and a very beautiful phone was given to me people give me all kinds of gifts and um i remember last year when i met my elder sister i told her about all the phones that come and how i really don't need them i give people and my sister said what is all that one you know you know ladies kingdom advance eh, kingdom but ah let's let the people enjoy as it's passing you know and so a phone was given to me i think it was last week or over the weekend and then i just i just felt like blessing my sister with it my younger sister now and i gave her the phone and she was very happy and i said how many people will die to hold this phone it was a gift but because we have an affinity to it say ah lord i won't let it go not for nothing if you buy it yes if you have that kind of attitude you will never get the anointing you will never get prosperity you will never get grace god will only give you what you can give him back when you become a distribution channel and you say lord let me be your treasurer upon the earth you will see wealth that you cannot account for i'm teaching you ancient secrets god is looking for treasurers men who will be custodians of the wealth of the kingdom god is looking for men who he will deposit his glory and his anointing and his mantle upon them but the problem is that what is meant for the building of the kingdom becomes our personal property there is absolutely nothing in my life that i will lose sleep for this night nothing that it left and i don't sleep what no have you come to that point in your life please listen to me i'm just charging us so that we'll pray have you come to the point in your life where if that shirt is missing you will fast for seven days and say it must come it is mine it was given to me right there's a film i recommended for us to watch some time ago lord of the rings right see that guy what's his name that ugly thing that creature it died with what it wanted together babylon is falling it held it even in death that ring he wanted it so badly he died with it that's what happens to anybody who loves things there are people who love power oh god i want anointing you are fasted but the reason is not for the building of his kingdom the building is so that you will get an anointing some want prosperity so that when you see poor people you just come and say see this watch i hope you are aware that uh, god can bless people where are you even from if that is your concept of prosperity it will be far from you tied to your life nothing will change to yours to yours koinonia hear me tonight you must come to that point where you realize that everything in your life must respond to this agenda this is the mystery of long life not just confessing there is a way you're all i want to marry to what degree will your marriage see to it that his kingdom is built that's why hannah never got a child she went to shiloh crying lord penina is mocking me and god said it's too small a reason and when hannah changed her motive she said oh lord you need a prophet to judge israel let my womb carry that prophet that prophet will directly support you she didn't pray twice once and the answer came there are many of us 
until you tell God what that marriage will be. Lord, a rich man. Hey! A rich man. God says, I don't have a problem. But how is it going to influence the kingdom? Because I told you, the gates will never open until you declare your allegiance. Lord, I want to be a CEO. Give me multi-millions. And God says, I don't have a problem. To what degree? I say, Lord, I don't like that one. When we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. God says, you are joking. You are talking to the all-wise God who sees your heart before you start. The secret to receiving the investments of the Spirit in our lives is total surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. Lord, I want to know you more. I want to know. Listen. Lose affinity for things. I'm telling you this tonight. Lose affinity for things. Let there be nothing in your life that you cannot give God. Sister, if that brother is an idol, I vow to you, God will take him. Not because he hates you. But his jealousy will fight anything that is not him in your life. There is nothing in my life today that I cannot give God. Nothing. Money. Grace. If God tells me this is the last koinonia service, we will never have koinonia again. I love him that much. I'm showing you the secrets of grace. Don't just say there is an emergence. Not everybody will be featured in that army. The hallmark of that army is death death god can give you a jeep today of 20 million and say son sell it and let the money go and in five minutes you have called the dealer come and pick it with joy in your heart and brother may god give you a wife that will not stop you from obeying god there are some there are some sisters sisters let me talk to you if you allow your affinity for things to stop the man that god gives you god comes and says so this seed and the wife says honey you see but the way this your thing i will leave you and all of a sudden the man says god no i'm this my wife is going to leave me i look forward to a generation where a husband and a wife can take their eyes he can give and they will hold their hands and cry but they'll say I surrender mm. I surrender the way that brother is desperate about marrying you he can't give anything to God he loves you the moment he started asking you out he followed you to Koinonia for three weeks the day you said no you never saw him again that's what he will do to you when he marries you because when men want you, they do everything. Rose of Sharon. Right? Lily of the valley. But let me tell you. You must show men the difference between them and the Christ in your life. My father can go. My mother can go. Anything can go for his majesty. I want to know you more. This is how God brought me to the place of the anointing. I don't know how others are getting their own. But I tell you the anointing will never come to your life until you die. At that point your voice will become like that of the sons of thunder. You will speak and nations will hear. Because you are speaking from the fountain of death. Something has happened to you. The life that I now live. I live by the fate of the son of God. For I am a man under authority. And on the strength of that authority, I can tell sickness, go, and it will go. I can tell the nations, go. It's not just some loss. Um, there is a circumcision happening to you. Church, God is looking for an army. But it's not enough to be available. You must be usable. And part of being usable is to die. 
I believe that there are before the end of this year there are multi-millionaires that will rise from this place the Lord showed me from the beginning of the year but this is not just money mongers buying cars to say ah poverty has whipped me now is my time to revenge if that is your agenda you are not in the list I guarantee you there are strange levels of anointings that will come but these are men who will stand and while the nation is applauding them like Lecrae sang they will be like a trailing star and pointing and saying I'm not ashamed there is one mightier than I there is one mightier than I I'm just a representative you watch an emergence of this army they are not just preachers they are apostolic businessmen they are apostolic musicians ministers with fire and grace they will arise like an infant of fire nothing able to stop them but the lord is asking you tonight as we round up this series of the emergence do you see yourself as being part of this army listen for some of you your family's cry and fasting for years is dependent on your commitment it's not because god has stopped raising deborahs is because many ladies have entered into carnality and flesh that fire and that passion it irritates me when i come in the midst of people and you don't hear them talking about god i know we are human beings i'm a young man come on now your passion must transcend the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life it takes a passion if you don't talk about men will you die must it always just be about men brother is it always about women or money can't it be jesus can't it be the christ can't it be his agenda there is too much noise in our soul there's too much noise of ambition because we have been taught that jesus makes men fail but he says seek you first pursue it with your all I was not looking for ministry if i was looking for ministry by now i would have been part of many struggling and insulting others but i was looking for him i still am pressing with all my heart because that which i've seen is only a tip of the iceberg i know he's more than this and let me tell you thank god for the lifting thank god for the names they call me but there is one desire that i may know him and the power of his resurrection this is my bread this is my cry i don't pray and say god give me tea and bread at this level i'm not doing ministry to find food to eat let me tell you i know what the blessing of god is but it has not changed me if you want god to use you you need to suspend some lusts and desires and begin to press him are you hearing me press for god it's not you that created marriage god created it he can give you a husband and a wife oh look at the motivations that drive us to church breakthrough i must get there you hold your file I'm, I'm not against all of that but i'm just saying it has become an obsession a man comes and he sits in front hoping that the man of god will see his file stand up and say man of god this is the business and the man talking is not poor is lost it's an affinity may God bring back the days when congregations will come and all they will do is to worship God and say Lord reveal your glory we are that generation that will stand at the gates of prophecy and keep knocking until that door open may God bring ladies who men will call you uncommon but your conversations are spiritual I know you want love God is not against it I know you want a husband the fastest way is to love him pour your all like a drink offering and stop killing yourself young people now catch hypertension right it used to be sickness for old people but right now young people a man of God starts a ministry in two years he's having hypertension because he wants 1,000 members where did he keep his fire and love for God we must return that fire it's all I seek for I'm not looking for anything my God is faithful listen there are three serious prayer points we are going to pray 
there are some of you standing outside so many people i want you to cry three quick prayer points and then we'll pray for nigeria hallelujah you're going to cry and say lord i make up my mind to be part of this emergence go ahead and pray whatever position you want to take lift your voice and begin to pray please pray from your heart i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus it's all about you it's not about me it's all about you jesus yes it's all about you it's all about you pray from your heart it's all let this be a prayer of consecration it's all about you it's all about you Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I consecrate myself unto you. I consecrate myself afresh. I will be part of that army that will present the Christ to the nations. I give you my beauty. Take it as a drink offering. I give you my intelligence. Take it as a drink offering. I give you my education. Take it as a drink offering. I give you my financial acumen. Take it as a drink offering. I give you my business. Take it as a drink offering. I give you my ministry, my influence. Create in me a clean heart and purify me. Purify me, create in me a clean heart so I may worship you. Create in me a clean heart and purify me, purify me, create in me a clean heart. So I may worship you. Cast me not away from your presence. Please don't take your spirit from me. And restore the joy of salvation. So that I may worship you. So that I may worship you hallelujah prayer point number two lord i'm available use me let's pray the old school prayer that fathers pray to get power use me oh god i'm available pray lift your voice in whatever way you want to use me go ahead in the financial realm i'm available Are you praying, Koinonia? In education, I am available. If you want to make me a celebrity to influence men for you, I am available. Pray. Use me, oh God. I pray the prayer of my fathers. I pray the prayer that made you use great men. And women around the world I pray that prayer use me I vow to give you the glory the nations will see your glory use me for signs for wonders pray make me your treasurer upon the earth it's the emergence of the army it's the awakening of saviors 
I will contribute my quota. I will be faithful. I can't do everything. But I will play my part. I will play my part. I will play my part. To see that the nations submit to the person of Jesus Christ. I will play my part in seeing the fire of revival fall upon Nigeria. I will play my part in preserving the miracle power, the power of prophecy, the apostolic anointing. It will not be lost in my time. I will go I will go wherever you lead me yeah. I will go I will go I will go wherever you lead me yeah. Just the voices one time lift your voice I will go I will go listen to what you are telling him he will send some of you to nations some of you your assignment is not in Nigeria he will send you if you will go not just as a missionary as a government representative as an apostolic financier as an authority in your field but behind the profession is an agenda we will go we will go i have a very big god who is always by my side a mighty God by my side of a very big God who is always by my side a very big God who by my side are just wasting our time. This is the foolishness that brought us thus far. Hallelujah. I don't like dancing. I don't know how to dance. The Bible said to whom much is given, much is given. Even if all I do is this way, God knows is a is my widow's might and with all my heart. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of you, some of you, you know what you did after you took one bottle of beer when you were in the world. So we just have two minutes, Sam. In two minutes, I want us to share this
bless you ourselves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me have your attention. I just want to explain something. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. It's all right. Yes, yes. Take it easy. When it's time to shout, we shout. When it's time to listen, let's listen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we, if when it's time to shout, we shout together. But when it's time to listen, let's listen so that we can allow God step in. Before you sit down, I just want to tell you something. Listen. You see, most times, most times, the difference between carnality and spirituality is not necessarily the action, it's the revelation. The same way someone can just shout and waste his time and just a show of youthfulness, another person can shout with revelation and that alone can be Tehila, the shout that will bring down Jericho. Are we together? Now, I know that we just took two or three minutes singing and dancing and jumping before the Lord. I want you to know that God is not a man. Please have this revelation. Are we together? Some of you, you will sit down now and check and find out that certain situations have gone. Some of you, in that, in that, in that rejoicing, you will be amazed to know the release of angels and the ministering spirits going to correct situations in your life. You must believe this. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a minute. Let me just tie it up and we'll pray. My spirit is fired up. This praise did something to me. Joy. Joy. Brothers and sisters, learn this. Be ever joyful. Don't jump today and dance and rejoice. And five minutes later, after service, you are frowning and acting as though it's not God that you came to meet again. Make it a disposition. Not just an emotional thing that happened in the night. The third key, very quickly, that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice. Key number three, sacrifice. Let me tie it quickly so that we can pray. Sacrifice, First Kings 17 from verse 7. Really, verse, verse, verse 1, to, 1 to 6, 1 Kings 17, we'll read, um, or if we do not have time, 17. And it came to pass after a while, he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain. Read on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying 
will just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience, luxury today, so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship 
your job left you but your praise did not leave you that praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job are you getting the, uh, the way this thing works there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. Hallelujah. Yes. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started. Gradually. Until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right. All of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach, but can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your I lost my job. 
lost my wife, lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I've not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non-deliverant, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough. I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. 
God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen. And anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened. And then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. 
Jesus was passing a city called Nay. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffin. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me. But this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. 
no matter what is wrong with your life your ministry has crashed down you were once on fire and once anointed and something happened you can't tell what it is but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again you are preaching and even you you know you are not blessing anybody again like the hair of samson it can come back again my help my help My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life. pregnant now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move he's there just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes I believe God I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation he will always be alive the Lord will perfect and concern jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weep not when the book is open. Tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you travel so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. is able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I, he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch me wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I'd like you, please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your 
come out and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call. But it's still in the
I'm seeing shoes in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is telling me people will wear them now. This is a sign of restoration too. Lord, where are they? Let it happen now. There is a grace for performance. Grace for performance. Please bring them out quickly. Please, ushers, you should know this. We are saving time. Please, quickly. He says, grace for performance right now. In the name of Jesus.
to relieve itself in your present. You think about your failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all things, one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past? I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven.
represent your families right now in the name of Jesus. May that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family and the family people are here. belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, sir. Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This one I'm saying, Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. Because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. Sir. That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lekho? Listen, just one touch from the Lord will change your story. Lift your hands. Lay come. Overflow. He's in the overflow. Where are you? Please stand up, my brothers. Stand up. What's your name? Lay come, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here. Your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. Lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's handy. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or August? Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just 
must bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you, something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus and bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. Hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister? Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Where is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. Yes. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes, Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. Correct, sir. That's what correct, stand up. That's what they correct, told you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you and I don't know how your mother got to know me but your mother loves me with all her heart is that true yes sir I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart you hear me yes sir yes I'll pray for you sir huh because you people have to be careful there is a group this bank group all of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon the Ukechuku. Is it Ukechuku or Ukechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC Kathy. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kathy. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Cape. Oh, I you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. You were the part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release.
use that grace and activate your spirit man by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, he will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Hi. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. Lord is said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. Out of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
children look small here, but I'm seeing. Hold on, hold on. They are here. One is who is this one? These ones are your children. I'm looking at this one. Is she married? She is married. Because I'm seeing a ring. And I'm seeing a ring, but I'm not hearing the sound of a child. And the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years. Two years. Two years. Where is the person? Come. Call the person's name now. No children. Two years. No children. We are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. This is the one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with the child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You Lisa. believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, meet him. He's the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Sometimes, diabetes, hold, ulcer, I will pray for you. you have fibroid, yes. you have diabetes, yes. you have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this, then her own children, barrenness. Then this one, there's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Okay. Okay. Repeat him, repeat him. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta Nebokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, Nana Kano. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad, diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, 
anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. within the ages of maybe 1 to 11 now as I'm praying the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting I'm seeing this is this is some demonic diabolic thing I'm not saying the child is bad I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me father wherever this child is I pray for our children now whether it is an initiation whether it is anything occultic and I decree and declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ Wherever that little child is, I command those devils to leave now. I command those devils to leave now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to leave now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother. The power of God is going to come on him now. Overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. 
the fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now while we are praying. We are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now watch this please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That thing. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke. Um, some of these funny things. You are here and. You are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside, or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit to speak in place. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia.
apostle does it matter of course it does of course it does of course it does when i start praying please don't come out again if you are still coming i want you to rush and come male or female i don't care whether you are a male or female doesn't matter i i, I perceive that there are even ladies male or female jesus is setting us free so there's nothing to be embarrassed about it please come and stand quickly Koinonia celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves some of them had dreams some of them had strange encounters but my bible says god bless you don't be ashamed come and join please give them room honestly let's let's let this happen let's let this happen let's let this happen if you are joining come the bible says for this purpose for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy that this this you see this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing you carry cough syrup snuff it till you are almost dying pass out and come back again and still do it and then others sell that that leaf that they tie you collect it smoke it and all of that look at me i want to pray for you and i want to pray for you in the name of the lord jesus your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way are we together now we are only we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of god i'm agreeing with you most people complain most people gossip about you i'm not gossiping about you i want to help you koinonia as a family loves you now listen let me challenge all of you please after this prayer huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month you are welcome to prayer department for the next one month praise god so this is how we do it here i won't deceive you that once i just pray for you you go back and meet those friends they will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them and then before you know it you will go back into those things one of the laws of of influence is atmosphere you open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you so after i pray for you um ushers what will happen is you can get their names and their details we forward it to the um prayer department and then We'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, yes, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, yes, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Somebody, I 
outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday, still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing here for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus as a point of contact as it's happening to you let it happen to you and hold on don't go ah, okay you are directing them okay we decree and declare have i prayed for you gentlemen in the name of jesus all of you are my friends and by the power of the holy spirit we break this addiction from your lives join me and say amen pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. And mentorship, there is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking God, they are watching. Those who are sick in body, overflow one, two, three, inside. Make your way out. Make the way out. Make the way out. us to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy. We will continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We are going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow 1, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow 2, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four. Just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside Overflow 1. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi. Overflow 1, he's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to Overflow 2. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you'll follow him. Overflow 2. Overflow 3, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at Overflow 2 and uh, Overflow 3 and any other Overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen, please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. by faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believing. Believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Shabratukasi. We still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Shabbat. Let the angel of the Lord spread. Now arise, O Lord. Will you come to your rest? Let the arms of your mind. And then we will rejoice as we glory in your righteousness. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that every request that is upon this altar tonight in the presence of your people, let it be turned into speedy testimonies. Christ, I ask you to arise in your might, visit impossible cases, beginning from right now, impossible cases, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire from heaven turn this request, some of them humanly impossible requests into testimonies. I stand upon this request and as I match them in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray. There are 
those online their requests we connect by faith and I prophesy that the same fire in this place will visit your requests in the name of Jesus those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned up to failure by reason of this prayer, they have declared a success. Lord, turn around age long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare right now, every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus let tonight be the last night you will see it let tonight be the last night you will see it. he said these Egyptians that you see today you will see them no more forever I command that you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shekete kete kete, ma prato so do 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 pa shekete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts. 
Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. ministry here come back to life now every time business help them help them please every time business here come back to life now in the name of jesus every dying destiny here i command you come back to life in the name of jesus every dying career come back to life in the name of jesus Whatever has destroyed your prayer life so that your, the fervency of your prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, I found those calls to come back alive. I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now Command you to throw your blessings to your life now. Listen, Noah did not go to look for the animals. He just opened the door. The same way you have opened the door of your destiny, I command, I'm saying it again. I want you to believe me. It doesn't take time. It only takes the right word into your life. I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service. Let there be strange testimonies of restoration. Strange testimonies of restoration. Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. 
anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family I cause accidents I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again thank you for lifting is gone but I cannot let us go without giving an opportunity please everyone stand any of you let's honor this altar call quickly help, help those under the anointing there are people here standing and saying man of God I want to make it right with Jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying man of God I want to return back some of you are yet to make this decision please listen to me inside and outside wherever you are you are saying man of God if you will pray for me I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus I'm ready to start afresh or start anew wherever you are I want to count five please if you are coming I want you to run clear the way for them our time is up and we have to be very very fast there are so many other things to do wherever you are as we begin to clap for you I count five you should be here 
there please run like there's fire on the mountain one those coming from outside please protocol help them clear the way for them so that they come quickly quickly two koinonia appreciate them as they come run to jesus christ overflow one two three four everywhere please quickly three Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with Him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three, four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me, you gave your life for me. It's a powerful prayer you are praying. Tonight, I've heard your word and I believe in you. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead and I declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.